Hello everybody and welcome to the 2017 OCE Discovery Conference in Toronto, which actually may be one of the best and the biggest conferences in our beautiful city. Today I'm very lucky to have stolen one of the keynote speaker, Jared Cohen, uh, who has 10 minutes of his valuable time with him. So, Jared, without further ado, can you please introduce yourself to our viewers and tell us who you are and what you do? Uh, absolutely. My name is uh, Jared Cohen. I'm the CEO of Jigsaw, which is one of the Alphabet companies, and I also work as a chief advisor to Alphabet's executive chairman. Uh, but more than that, I'm just really interested in the nexus of geopolitics and technology, something which I think has been converging for more than a decade, and we're finally in this moment where everybody's waking up. That's phenomenal, because those are many of the same issues that the Singularity.fm audience is very interested in it. And so let me ask you, what do you think are the biggest issues of our time? Perhaps humanity's grandest challenges? So I think, I always think it's useful to reflect on where we came from before exactly. we sort of ask yes. where we're, we're going. And I think the last decade and a half has really been a story about the advent of technology, you know, an access revolution. And we're basically ready to close the book on that chapter of history. Um, you know, you're now in this sort of moment where you get better 4G access in the tribal areas of Pakistan than you get in New York City. Um, and everybody sort of has these stories. So we're at this moment now where 196 countries around the world are mass producing data. Um, and it's time to ask the question, what happens when uh, technology is ubiquitous? Um, and to me, there's things that I'm excited about, but there's also things that I'm very concerned about. I would say the, the biggest thing that I'm concerned about is what happens now when all of the challenges of the physical world spill over online. And are we ready for that? Mm -hmm. So can you be a little bit more specific? What do you mean by online challenges? So, I mean, look, everything that we see online that causes us angst has okay. a physical frame of reference. So we're all worried about the decline in civility on the internet. We're worried about growing toxicity and organized harassment online. I'm worried about what happens when cyberbullying becomes better organized, better funded, and state-sponsored. And my view is if governments are willing to persecute their people in the streets, in the physical sense, you know, online you have a much lower barrier of entry. I see. So uh, what is Google in general, or you in particular, in, in your job professional capacity going to do about that to make it better, to hopefully alleviate and address those concerns? So, so Jigsaw, if you sort of apply a technical lens to what we do, we really are you know, a, an alphabet entity focused on artificial intelligence and on security. And obviously, those two don't have to be mutually exclusive. So we have a massive training data set of uh, abuse data, annotated abuse data. Um, and what that's allowed us to do is uh, build, a, uh, build an API called Perspective, uh, where any publisher or platform can run their comments or discussions through this API, and they receive a score back zero to 100 of how toxic that language is. You know, toxic defined by these comments are likely to cause somebody to leave the conversation. And what that allows publishers and platforms to do is leverage the you know, sort of multitude of things that developers have built that allow them to leverage that score. So for instance, you can imagine a publisher deciding any comment you know, north of 75 uh, that's returned by the API, we're going to flag for our moderators. Or maybe you and I have a different threshold for how toxic the language is that we're willing to see. So imagine being able to dynamically turn the dial or the volume up or down, depending on what your, depending on what your mood is. You're not filtering in this case by topic, you're filtering by tone. Um, now, my view is what that does is it allows you to use machine learning to facilitate better conversations. And what about those kind of interesting cases that have made the news recently with, let's say, art reproduction or, let's say, breast cancer survival women who had their pictures posted on mm -hmm. Facebook and Google Plus and so on, and who were actually, uh, unfortunately, banned for at least for a time period by most of those yeah. platforms. How does the algorithm make the difference between an image like that and something like hate speech or, or uh, pornography and so on? Well, first of all, I mean, you know, at the end of the day, you know, people always want the sort of magical algorithm to you know, have it be a panacea to some particular problem. But at the end of the day, you know, machine learning is only as good as the training data set you have. And the training data set is only as good as the volume of data and how annotated that data is. So with things like uh, hate speech, for instance, um, there's so many different factors at play here that make annotating a data set of reasonable size to train against quite difficult. The first is you know, each jurisdiction in the world has a different definition of hate speech. Two, context matters so much and machine learning is good at many things. Uh, picking up on context is still quite difficult. Um, it turns out that we'll probably have an easier time building machine learning models to measure things like unsubstantiality um, or how off topic a comment is before we get to machine learning models that can can um, can measure uh, hate speech. 
If I were to ask you to tell me the most important thing that you think we should be focusing on in 30 seconds, what would that be? I mean, to me, it's about, you know, you know, crowdsourcing as much annotated data as possible um, to be able to harness the full power of what machine learning can do. Um, all of us increasingly split our time between a physical and a digital world, um, and it's up to us to you know, leverage the best of machine learning to ensure that that digital is, experience is even better than the physical one. Jared Cohen, thank you very much for being with right, us today. Thank you. Thank you.